What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, August 25th, 2024, and I have an emergency update to share with you guys. Right now it is 2034 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from the Middle East and also from Eastern Europe. If you guys are not aware, last night Israel launched a massive preemptive strike on Hezbollah. We covered it live, so I want to update you on that situation. But before I update you on that, I want to share some very concerning news with you. So first of all, we have U.S. nuclear forces on high alert today. We had two presidential doomsday planes airborne earlier this afternoon. One went to Colorado Springs from Offutt Air Base. That's the third day in a row that a doomsday plane has went to Colorado Springs from Offutt Air Base. Okay, Colorado Springs is home of Cheyenne Mountain Doomsday Bunker. It's a giant bunker underneath a massive mountain, 5,000 or 6,000 feet high, right outside of Colorado Springs. The president and VIPs are supposed to go there when there's a nuclear war. So over the last three, maybe four days, we've been seeing doomsday planes going from Offutt Air Base, which also has a bunker. That's where Dick Cheney and Bush went after 9-11. They went to the Stratcom bunker underneath Offutt Air Base. Okay, Offutt Air Base is home of U.S. Strategic Command which is basically like the brain of the U.S. military. Strategic Command controls every branch of the military, every combatant command. And so a presidential doomsday plane, which is designed to withstand EMPs and different hazards, flew directly to Colorado Springs from Offutt Air Base. And the presidential doomsday plane is so the president and the defense secretary and vice president can command the U.S. nuclear arsenal from the air. It's also known as the National Airborne Operations Center, NAOC. During a nuclear war, the president would go up in the air on these doomsday planes because they're actually safer to be in than in a bunker during a nuclear war because our enemies know where all of our doomsday bunkers are. And so they're going to immediately target those bunkers with earth-penetrating warheads. So if the president or VIPs are in those bunkers, they could potentially get wiped out. But if they're up in the air, they're actually safer. So this is very, very concerning. So here you can see the flight path of that doomsday plane going to Colorado Springs. And then there was another doomsday plane that took off from what appears to be Tucson Davis Monthan Air Force Base. And it went to Whiteman Air Force Base, which happens to be the home of our B-2 stealth bombers. So that's very interesting. We also had a National Nuclear Safety Administration plane fly from Knoxville to Amarillo. So that's pretty interesting. Now near Knoxville, you have Oak Ridge, which played a big part in the development of the first nuclear weapon here in America. And and Amarillo is very close to the Pantex plant. In the Pantex plant, that's where we assemble all of our nuclear weapons. It's the only place in the entire country where we assemble nuclear weapons. Okay, so very serious stuff going on today. Here's another look at these planes. And then there was also a nuclear war command and control plane doing loops off the coast of New Jersey. Here's a closer look at that doomsday plane. You can see it was doing touch and goes here in Colorado Springs. And here's actually some pictures that were sent to me by a subscriber who lives right next to Cheyenne Mountain and Colorado Springs. And he lives like right under the approach to the airport there. And here you can see that doomsday plane from two days ago landing he was able to get this picture for me, and then this was actually today, okay? So this is the one today, and this is the one from yesterday. So big thanks to that person for sending me this, and this is what we have going on right now. We have one nuclear war command and control plane looping over Oklahoma. We also had 
the Canadian Air Force One fly from Ottawa to Nova Scotia, which is pretty interesting. Now, in Nova Scotia, we have the Greenwood Submarine Hunting Base for Canadian Forces right here, Greenwood. And before I continue with the breaking news, I wanted to mention the sponsor for this update, which is My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing their most aggressive discount yet on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the deal, you got to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. They've lowered the price of their three month food supply from $800 down to $500 three months of emergency food for 500 bucks. That is a really good deal and it will last you 25 years because it is freeze dried and it's all packed within six rugged water resistant buckets. So you have all that food in a small package. You can store that pretty much anywhere and you can also take it with you. If you have to bug out, you can throw that in your vehicle easily. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $300 off the My Patriot Supply, three-month emergency food supply, 500 bucks for it. Also, they have free shipping and handling included. In addition to the three-month supply, they also have a general store. And to get to their general store, you got to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see the My Patriot Supply logo at the very bottom of the page. You click on that and it'll take you to their general store and they have all kinds of discounts. And to get the deals, you got to use my link, preparewithnyprepper.com. And I'll leave the link in the description below this video. This is where the Canadian CP-140 Auroras are stationed and they're responsible for patrolling the entire eastern seaboard of North America and hunting for Russian boomers, that's Russian nuclear armed subs, during a nuclear war. So Reuters said yesterday that a British citizen who happens to be one of their safety advisors working with one of their teams, was killed in a missile strike on a hotel in eastern Ukraine. The man was part of a Reuters crew staying at Hotel Sapphire in Kramatorsk. When it was hit by a missile strike, the agency announced in a statement on X, saying it was devastated by the news. Okay, so a British citizen and part of a Reuters team killed in a Russian missile attack in eastern Ukraine. That is very, very concerning. And the Ukrainian Foreign Affairs Ministry made a statement regarding Belarus concentrating troops and weapons close to the Ukrainian border. According to the intelligence agencies of Ukraine, the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus, under the guise of exercises, are concentrating a significant number of personnel in particular, the Special Operations Forces, weapons, and military equipment, including tanks, artillery, anti-aircraft missiles, air defense equipment, and engineering equipment in the Gommel region near the northern borders of Ukraine. The presence of mercenaries of the former PMK Wagner group were also recorded. The ministry called officials of the Republic of Belarus not to make tragic mistakes for their own country under pressure from Moscow and its armed forces to stop unfriendly actions and withdraw troops from the state border of Ukraine to a distance that exceeds the range of fire systems available in the Republic of Belarus. Ukraine warned that in case of violation of the state border of Ukraine by Belarus, our state will take all necessary measures in order to implement the right to self-defense guaranteed by the UN Charter. At the same time, all troop concentrations, military facilities, and supply routes on the territory of Belarus will be legal targets for the armed forces of Ukraine. Wow. Okay, so Belarus concentrating air defenses, artillery, tanks, special ops, everything you would need to invade a country right on the border of Ukraine in Gamal. This is the same area that Russia and Belarus concentrated their forces in right before they invaded Ukraine two and a half years ago. 
Okay, so Ukraine saying that all troop concentrations, military facilities, and supply routes on the territory of Belarus will be legal targets. So that means Ukraine would be willing to strike anywhere in Belarus. So this is very, very concerning. And I want to update you guys on what happened last night with Israel. So, so far today, we haven't really heard anything happen with Hezbollah. They have not launched any more rockets today. Uh, just some minor exchanges between Israel and Hezbollah today, but nothing crazy. But Israel said that Hezbollah was preparing to launch over 6,000 rockets into Israel. Okay, so just to give you a perspective of how many rockets that is, since October of last year when the war in Gaza started, all of the missiles that Hezbollah fired amounts to about 6,700, okay? so And that's how much Hezbollah was going to launch last night at Israel. And Israeli aircraft hit hundreds of Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. The Defense Secretary of the U.S., Lloyd Austin, spoke by phone with the Israeli Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant, and they discussed the whole situation Israeli Army Radio reported that about 100 Israeli fighter jets preemptively struck more than 200 Hezbollah sites in southern Lebanon where rockets were being prepared to fire. So this is huge, guys. This is historic. Okay, just the fact that Hezbollah was planning to launch that many rockets is historic. Okay, 6,000 rockets, a year's worth of of rockets all in one shot okay that is absolutely huge news and very very concerning and two egyptian sources said that the gaza ceasefire talks ended today with no deal with neither israel nor hamas agreeing on any of the compromises and egypt is calling on hezbollah to refrain from further attacks to avoid escalation of the conflict in the region. Hezbollah says that they launched 320 rockets at Israel last night. They said they hit the Moran base, the Nev Siv battery, the Zaytun base, the Zawara batteries, the Sahel base, the Kila barracks, the UAV barracks in the Golan Heights, the Nafi base, the Yardina base, the Ain Zatim base, and the Ramat Naftali base. So that's what Hezbollah is saying. They, they say they hit all those targets, which is probably BS. And Israeli Channel 12 reported that the U.S. was heavily involved since the early stages of this preemptive strike on Hezbollah. Meanwhile, Fox News reported that the U.S. military denied any involvement. So isn't that funny? And Prime Minister of Israel Benjamin Netanyahu stated this morning in a speech to the press that, quote, we are determined to do everything to protect our country, to return the residents of the north safely to their homes, and to continue to uphold a simple rule. Whoever hurts us, we hurt him. Okay, so Netanyahu is not having any of it. Okay, he is a very strong leader, and I don't think that He's going to allow this type of stuff to continue on much longer, okay? There's still hundreds of thousands of Israelis that had to abandon northern Israel, guys. Okay, that would be like if Mexico started launching missiles into Texas, into Corpus Christi, and everybody in Corpus Christi had to move out and go to Dallas, okay? And Corpus Christi was just a, a no a no-go zone because of all the strikes. That That's unacceptable. We wouldn't tolerate that. We would immediately annihilate all those uh, forces that would be doing that, okay? But yet, our country and our government right now is expecting Israel to act differently. Our government is expecting Israel to basically absorb all these attacks. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They basically want Israel to capitulate, okay, to terrorists who... Uh, beheaded children and did all kinds of vile things on October 7. And the Israeli army said that they targeted more than 1,000 Hezbollah missile platforms. Wow. So we're getting conflicting information about what was hit, how many sites were hit, but we know at least several hundred up to a thousand targets, it seems like. And according to the IDF, 
some 210 rockets and 20 drones were launched from Lebanon at northern Israel during Hezbollah's attack. Some of the targets were intercepted while others impacted, causing damage and injuries. Many rockets also struck open areas. And earlier this morning, Netanyahu called an emergency security cabinet meeting, and also the Prime Minister of Lebanon called an emergency meeting, and Israel is under a 48-hour state of emergency. I want to just show you guys some flights here in Europe and in the Mediterranean. So we had another U.S. RQ-4 Global Hawk patrol the border of Finland and Russia, and also in Estonia here again. And we also had a German reconnaissance plane flying really low off the coast of the Netherlands. Now, two days ago, there was breaking news that Russia was sending these drones into northern Germany to fly over one of their nuclear facilities. So now Germany is really keeping an eye on this area here along the Baltic Sea coast and the North Sea English Channel area. We also had a U.S. military VIP plane take off from Warsaw last night. And we don't know where it went because it turned its transponder off as soon as it crossed into Germany. But what's interesting is this U.S. government or U.S. military VIP plane actually was communicating on a nuclear forces frequency last night. So this had to be a very important plane and a very important person or payload on this plane for it to be communicating with nuclear forces on the nuclear forces frequency but it was in warsaw so something's brewing over here guys okay and then we had another u.s navy reconnaissance drone patrolling the coast of israel and lebanon and russian mill bloggers and the russian state media have shared pictures and videos of what they claim to be our British Challenger tanks in the Kursk region of Russia being used by Ukrainian forces. So here's one picture that was shared by Russian mill bloggers. And then here's a video that TASS, the Russian state news agency, shared of a Challenger tank being hit by some kind of artillery shell or some kind of anti-tank weapon here. So, guys, the situation is continuing to escalate. We also have news that Ukraine is planning to invade another region of Russia, okay, the Bryansk region of Russia, which is right next to Kursk, okay? So, this is very, very serious, okay? Ukraine is now actually invading Russian territory. The IAEA chief is going to be visiting the nuclear power plant in Kursk this coming week, okay? And Russia has already dug trenches around the power plant. They're afraid Ukraine is going to try to take control of it. But this is very serious, guys, okay? We have American weapons, British weapons, NATO weapons now being used on Russian territory, okay? Challenger tanks, various types of missiles, okay? Uh, bombs of various types, fighter jets, okay? Russia is going to use this as an excuse to strike NATO bases and to nuke Ukraine. That's what I think we're going to see. I think Russia is going to strike maybe some bases in, in Poland where all the equipment is being moved into Ukraine, possibly Zeshuv and some other facilities, and then maybe nuke Ukraine possibly if they continue to push deeper and deeper into Russia. Russia's nuclear war doctrine is all about escalate to de-escalate, okay? And the situation that's happening right now is exactly what Russia's nuclear war doctrine talks about, okay? A situation where there's an uncontrollable attack on Russia and they can escalate with nuclear weapons in order to de-escalate the situation. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. I will be on the live stream later on tonight. And the live stream is ongoing 24-7. I'm going to keep it up. And I do plan to install a very powerful radio system in the coming days. And that will be going online on the 24-7 stream. So we're going to have our own NY Prepper radio so we can listen to 
nuclear forces and militaries from all over the world and it'll be 24 7 100 percent reliable you don't have to pay for that all you got to do is just show up to the stream and i want to remind you guys also that in two weeks i'm going to be leaving for a trip to poland i'm going to be gone for two weeks i will be bringing some of my equipment there so i can keep the 24 7 streams going but i probably won't be able to do updates like this too often so that'll be in two weeks and i'll be gone for two weeks okay so just wanted to let you guys know so when you don't see my updates you don't freak out but that's it for now guys i will be back tomorrow with another update and i will be in the 24 7 stream later on tonight so until next time take care god bless and don't forget the three p's prepare practice and persevere